Jonathan Lee Riches investigates. I am covering the tragedy in Moscow, Idaho. Four college students brutally stabbed inside a home during the early morning hours of November 13th, 2022. Coroner thinks it was between the hours of 3 and 4 a.m. Police made no arrest, haven't publicly identified any suspects, haven't found the murder weapon, which is a knife, and are looking for a white Hyundai Elantra that they think the occupants have critical information in reference to this case a friend of the victims recently a purported friend let me change that a minute a purported friend of the victims just posted some photos never seen photos that i've seen maybe you guys seen it um these photos of the victims and i want to share this post it was posted in one of the facebook groups centered around the tragedy there's lots of Facebook groups set up around this tragedy. A lot of people are piling into these groups, sharing memories, sharing things. And I want to share this particular post and then we will discuss. Check it out. So this was posted in one of the Facebook groups centered around the Moscow tragedies. And an individual is claiming to be a friend of the victims. I wanted to share these memories long ago, but friends, including myself, are afraid of members in these groups coming after us and digging into our lives and publicly displaying our personal information. I often wonder, would Kaylee still be here if she had slept in her own room that night? If Ethan had gone home that night, would he too still be here? And this individual shared photographs never seen these photographs before i will scroll down and show you these photographs looks like these are new photographs from friends i believe i've seen this one before or it looks like Kaylee and Jack Decor. Looks like Dylan and Bethany, the two surviving roommates. I think we've seen this before this is bethany some of you probably never seen these photos that's why i'm sharing seems like uh they're coming from friends pi beta phi 2022 um that's the two surviving roommates, Bethany and Bethany Funk and Dylan Mortensen. So going to this post, let's see what people have to say. I really think so. I believe she had no stuff there anymore, was moving to Texas. She really didn't have anywhere to sleep, so shared bed. Somebody said, this post is creepy to me, a bit obsessed. People are getting upset with me. Please stop. You accuse people, yet some anonymous person posts 20 pictures, edits their post after people say it's creepy to say they are a friend and you believe they are a friend. Yet they would ask a question that a friend wouldn't ask. Where is Ethan in these photos? He is not in one, yet the poster brought him up. There is only one of Zana, this is not a normal friend grieving post or a normal post at all. It's extremely odd and extremely disturbing to the families of the victims. So someone's saying that this is not a friend. And people are commenting. Let's scroll. Thank you for sharing these photos. This post is very weird. This post has pictures without Kaylee in them, which is semi weird to me. So someone has these photographs and people are saying, are you, it looks like people are questioning whether this person is really a friend or what their motives are by sharing this 
post. Sounds like this group member may have been a friend of the victim. She said their friends can't make posts and share posts together or memories. This may just be a tribute to her friends or a way of processing it. Try to be kinder versus saying it's creepy or persuasive, uh, per perverse. Some people are encouraging them to delete, but it's up. It's up in this group, and this is a big group. This is a big group. So let me rephrase this again. Purportedly from a friend of the victims. Not sure, though. Let me know what you think. So some of those photos I've never seen before. So it kind of shows a little bit about the victims, right? People are questioning whether that was really a friend or not. Who, you know, who could that be that has certain pictures of, you know, someone? It's just like all of us, online sleuths. And just like the media and the public, a lot of us are going around the internet trying to find any pictures or any type of clues that could find out who murdered these four innocent people. You know, a lot of speculation going on, a lot of name throwing uh, out there going on. People are naming names. I do it myself. People are just trying to find out who did this crime. What do you think? I want to know your thoughts. Do you think that person was a legit friend? Um, anything in there that stuck out to you? I'm curious to know. Subscribe to my channel, like, hit the notification button. I'm covering this case. Um, sharing new developments, sharing stuff that you might know and you might not know. You know, bring in awareness, trying to do my best to help. Maybe somebody out there knows and sees one of these videos out there that we post, make. Maybe somebody sees one of these Facebook posts about, you know, the victims and says, hey, I know something. And then goes and gives it to authorities and it could be that one clue to crack the case and solve this case. Because there's a murderer or murderers on the loose. And just like I said, they're looking for a white car, the occupants. They could look, be looking for one occupant. They could be looking for multiple people. You know, will police give out a little bit more information to the public so the public can use that information to help and assist? I do think when it comes down to this case, the, the police is, they're going to, the authorities are going to have to rely on the community to help them with this. I really do. I think the community is going to end up solving this case. We'll talk soon. God bless. Justice for the victims. I'll be posting more videos later. Be safe.